How you doing friends? It's me, Jeff Lullin of Faithfully United, here with Pastor Steve Sheridan of Empty Tomb. Hi everybody. How you doing Steve? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm absolutely excited just yeah. to be here with you and uh, just show how God's moving in this church and or this ministry and uh, the lives he's impacting. Amen. It's it's been a it's been a run. We've been down here now for 21 years in this neighborhood. 21 years. Mm -hmm. We've been in this building for 17 years, but we've been in South Omaha now for 21 years. December. Wow. And he uh, empty tomb is just catty corn of uh, catty corner of South High School. Right. 25th and K Street, right on the corner. We have services at at 9:30 every Sunday morning, and. Uh, I mean, you just come as you are. I wear blue jeans and, and a Jesus t-shirt usually. And, and uh, folks from all over the city now are coming. It used to be just this neighborhood. And we really had a heart to reach out to the poor and the homeless and to the addicts and what have you. But mm -hmm. now over the last couple of years, now there are people from all over, north, south, east, and west, are starting to show up down here. And wow. that's been a blessing because wow. the Spirit of God is moving and touching lives. Absolutely. Uh, before this, uh, just in the last couple of days, as we were getting ready for this, we just said, uh, you know what, we're not going to have prepared conversations. Uh, we're just going to just let the Holy Spirit guide us as we go. And and that's so exciting because you, uh, it's just the unknown of where we're going to, where he leads us and, and what comes up. I feel that God knew before the foundation of the world that you and I are going to be sitting here. And how do we know what people need to hear? So it's better right. we just leave it up to the Lord. Somebody out there may hear something that might touch their heart today, and I pray that it does. Absolutely. And even before we start, we were just praying about this uh, conversation, and we just pray that uh, the right message hears the right person. I very much do believe that. I do too. I do too. God knows what He's doing. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been here for 21 years, mm -hmm. and it, last time we spoke, you just talked about how God has provided so many resources just to... Uh, you just kept going forward, but God just kept bringing you more and more. Yeah. You know, we every Sunday when I get done preaching, we give away groceries. It started with about five bags of groceries. Now we're giving away about 65 to 75 bags of groceries mm -hmm. every week. And then we also have uh, Don and Diana, who started a feeding ministry a number of years ago. God's taken uh, Don home to be with him. and uh, But now there are people from all over the city, different Bible study groups are coming. And they are preparing meals for us. So that wow. now we're given a hot meal every Sunday when we can. And we need some people to fill in those. So if you have a Bible study group that would like to serve, uh, to feed some Sunday, get a hold of me, private message me. Uh, and I would love to get you hooked up to do that. It's a mm -hmm. great blessing. I always tell people you're about ready to serve Jesus about 200 times, 250 times. <laughs> see, the, what I love about these episodes is we see uh, about the churches and ministries that are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to see how God moves in there. And then also we get to see um, how people can get connected and get involved. Uh, of course, if that speaks to your heart and God puts it on your heart to do so. Amen. Over the years so now, we've been doing, it started with three guys from the car business. I was the used car manager. I have two salesmen. That's what started Empty Tomb. And then, and over the years, as we started to grow, people would come down and they'd say, oh, uh, what can I do? Tell me what I can do. And I would just say, why don't you just come down and see what the Holy Spirit puts in their heart. Absolutely. And, and they would stay or some would go. Right. And so he brings who we need down here. And so I don't assign people. I don't, I'm not the boss. People ask me one day, this guy come in, are you the boss? Down? No, I'm not the boss. But I know who is the boss. Absolutely. So he's definitely in charge. Absolutely. I tell you what, um, last, the first time we met, um, we just kind of had some mutual friends on Facebook and I reached out saying, uh, Steve, I would like to sit down, just hear about Empty Tomb and what, what all is going on here. And, uh, you know, we didn't have a set conversation like that. We just, wow, I tell you, we had just a powerful conversation. Awesome. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in Omaha. And I think I Very shared much. with you that many years ago, I had been given a word from a brother from uh, Africa, from Nigeria, mm -hmm. that God was going to bring revival to this city. And that was 22 years ago. It was it was while the Brownsville revival was going on. Wow! And he told me that because Omaha is the heart of this nation, that when a man's heart's weak, the whole body's weak. Right. When God heals the heart. God will heal the body. And so for all these years, I've been praying for God to to revive us. You right. Know, bring revival. And I'm not a you know they call me Pastor Steve. I'm just a regular guy. I used to be a used car manager. Now I'm a business manager, business owner. Uh, but. God has his designs on this city. Yes. And God has his designs for some reason 
on this vessel and on this vessel and on you out there. <laughs> and it's time for us to find out, God, what is it that you want us to do? How yep. can I serve you, yep. Lord? How can I bring you glory? Yes. Uh, if you ever get the chance to just uh, see uh, his episodes when he goes live or even just come here to just to hear him preach, uh, he, he really he puts his heart out there. Uh, Steve really does. And, it, and it's just... Um, if I were to say one person is led by the Holy Spirit, I would absolutely say Steve is led. Well, and it's that's a, a that's blessing a great to hear. honor. It's a blessing. You know what? Years ago, the Holy Spirit said to me, as long as you stay out of my way, <laughs> many people yes. will be blessed. Yes. And so I'm afraid of getting in his way. And I can tell you, and you can ask the congregation, I'll get down here on a Sunday, and mm -hmm. I will think I know. I will think, okay, I think this is what I'm going to preach. Mm -hmm. And time without number, I'll get down here and he'll change it on me. Now, two weeks ago, <laughs> I came down here. I yes. thought it was going to be Philippians 2 or Psalms 119. We ended up in Matthew 10. And the Spirit of God moved and people came up and some were crying. Oh, what a message. You know, and then I know better than anyone. I didn't prepare that message. Right, right. And there was a time, one time, if you don't mind, I'll share it. Please. There was, in our second building was a strip mall. It was a terrible bar that we took over. Our first place was a bookie joint. Our second place was this terrible bar. And on this very, very cold, cold Sunday morning, uh, this man wandered in because he saw people were getting coffee. And it was cold outside, so he wanted to come mm -hmm. in and get a cup of coffee. So he came in and sat down because everybody else was sitting down. And I got down there and I said, uh, when I got up to preach, I said, well, the Lord changed the message on me again. And when he changed it to the message where <laughs> Jesus came upon the man uh, at the pool of Bethesda, who had been impotent, who had been sick for 38 years. And so I announced, I didn't plan it. I gave the message. The brother, when I gave the invitation, he walked up in front of everybody. He had just been passing through. He'd been hitchhiking from the East Coast to the West. He got mm -hmm. off on Council Bluffs and wandered to the South Omaha Bridge and wandered into our place. Look how God does things. And he right. came up and he said, did you say you didn't plan to give that message? I said, that's correct. He said, I've been a heroin addict for 38 years. Wow. And he said, once you said that, that whole message funneled into my heart. He came, he gave his life to Jesus. I never saw him again, but God changed that message just for that guy. So if I think I can tell, now I'm not saying there are people out there, you're a lot smarter than I am. And God leads you and you prepare your sermons. But the way I operate, the way he operates with me, maybe I should say, mm -hmm. is he doesn't let me prepare. He just, I've been trying to learn how to get out of his way <laughs> and, and, and know the Spirit's leading. And that's the way that I feel we should do it. What I love about that too is there's humbleness in that. You have to rely on the Lord. You have to rely that Absolutely. the message gets out right. That um, that it, it is feeding the congregation, Amen. and people are being shepherd. I'm afraid, you know, to get in his way. Mm -hmm. You don't want to. I wouldn't want to be a stumbling block to keep somebody right. from receiving what God wants them to receive. If I think I'm so smart and I want to interject something, best me, better thing for me is just to get back, shut up, <laughs> and let God use me. And I'm telling you, I'll get down here sometimes, Jeff, and I, mm -hmm. I'll be sick. Mm -hmm. I've had times of been coughing and sneezing, and then I get up to preach, nothing, not wow. a snivel, nothing. As soon as there's one time in particular, I remember, because I finished praying the benediction, and I said, in Jesus' name, amen, and then, shachoo, started sneezing, coughing, came right back. But for that time that I preached, right. nothing, wow. absolutely nothing. So I believe the Holy Spirit uses people. I believe he can use yep. me. It's almost like he, for that period of time, he takes over. That's what you want. That's right. what I want. I mean, I don't have anything to offer to people, but when he uses me, it's amazing what, I, what I've seen him do. Right. You know, that reminds me, um, when my wife and I were taking classes before we were getting married, uh, just um, those kind of requirement classes, mm -hmm. um, I had like the worst headache and uh, oh, I, just, I wasn't doing well. And we got to the church right in time for the classes, and it's like as soon as I walked through the door, my my headache went away. Amen. I felt great, and it's almost like uh, Jeff. You need to pay attention because right. marriage is important. That's right. <laughs> and don't worry. You know what? If when you're about my business, I'll take care of your business. Absolutely. And that's the way I feel. He says it. So, it's been a it's been a ride. It's been and not only here, but we have a thrift mm -hmm. store. My family owns mm -hmm. a thrift store uh, called New Life Thrift Store, and man, the ministry there is amazing. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I mean we. Uh, you know, it's been slow lately, so I've been staffing less people, and I've been spending a lot of time on the register, and so I'm checking people out at the cash register, mm -hmm. and when I'm moved by the Spirit of God to minister to somebody, I do, I'll just pray for them. And the other day, a woman called me, 
she was very upset because she's told she's got to go in for back surgery and she's she's elderly and she was crying mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm in the middle of a transaction and I and I but I just started praying for her and then when I got done praying for her I said to the ladies ladies I'm sorry excuse me and they said no we were praying with you wow. which I thought that was awesome but there are people who come down to New Life thrift store and I wish you all would come down and shop but there are people who come down there just just for the ministry, just to be prayed for. Absolutely, a number of people come in just to be prayed for. So, and what a great opportunity! People come in all the time. They just want uh, one to have a, a, a good conversation. Yeah. To two to see what uh, might what need they can get there. Yeah. You know, we and, got we got great stuff, and we keep our prices really cheap. But you know, myself and two other brothers, we pray every single day uh, on our knees for the customers who come into that place, for fantastic. the employees who work here or there and um, I mean that's just every day starts off with prayer and we see a lot of cool things I've actually preached uh, funerals for people that I've led to the Lord there at, at, wow. the, at the store and uh, I have to tell you guys we don't have enough time for me to tell you all the stories I believe it's just as much yep. a ministry as this place is I tell you what too um, it's also a constant reminder of these uh, possessions that we have um, we can't take those with us to mm -hmm. heaven so everything we have is is right in here yeah. uh, we have a heart we have our uh, our soul and that's and, and that's all for Jesus yeah I heard somebody say one time the only thing we can take to heaven with us is our soul and the souls of those that we might have been used to reach wow. with the kingdom of God so you know, maybe some of them there I know some are there ahead of me mm -hmm. uh, that I've had the privilege to lead to Jesus and and I you know when I get to heaven I'm gonna see him won't that be something another thing too about the new life thrift is those items get a new life just like yeah. we do with Christ. Amen. Um, and I, that's powerful to think about. It is. And to see things that we discard as we don't want anymore right. to somebody else. Wow, man, look at this. Right. They're very excited yep. about them. So I, I love the ministry. I love the ministry at, at New Life Thrift. It's it's an awesome place. God owns it. The man who started mm -hmm. the business loves the Lord. He founded it on Christ. Hence the name New Life. Mm -hmm. And it continues. Matter of fact, he chose and he decided to sell it to me he told me one time there's no one else I would have sold it to wow. so it was a God thing that is amazing yeah I just recently read a book and it, it had the visual of um, um, Jesus pouring water into our cups mm -hmm. and if you have a dirty cup well it needs to be clean first right. so you can have good water Amen. and it, just like that I mean those those items and things you just clean them up and they have a new life exactly and that's just like a little us. sermon right there about us yeah absolutely you know, I, yesterday I preached uh, from Nehemiah chapter 1 and Nehemiah he's a cupbearer he wasn't a prophet he wasn't a preacher mm -hmm. he was a cupbearer for the king but when he heard that Jerusalem's walls had been broken down and that the gates had been burned he wept in anguish and began to repent for the sins of the people of Jerusalem, for his people, the Jewish people. And that just, if Jeff and I were talking earlier, and if you guys know me, and a lot of you perhaps do, and some of you don't, but mm -hmm. my heart is for revival. Yep. And so when Jerusalem's walls got torn down, Nehemiah wept. I believe there should be weeping over the walls of the church in America that have come yes. down because of our sin because mm -hmm. of our compromise. I believe mm -hmm. that the church, I believe the world has taken more of a toll or has influenced the church more than the church has influenced the world in America. And that means we need revival. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when I came in here, uh, I asked you a question of, why is this labeled a ministry and not a church? You're, you're giving the word and you're pastoring the flock. Mm -hmm. And your answer was so fantastic. Would you mind just reading you know, to me, we are a, we're a light in a dark place. Mm -hmm. No matter where you're at, maybe you're a Christian and you work amongst uh, unbelievers. You're a light in the dark place, or at least you should be a light in the dark place. And so in this neighborhood, when we first moved down here 21 years ago, we moved into this little terrible place down this first place was a bookie <laughs> joint. And when we moved in, I told some of the places, the businesses, that when Jesus moves in, the devil moves out. Mm -hmm. Well, in that first year, four bars closed down. Oh, wow. And then when we started growing, we were going to move. We had some of the people from the neighborhood say, please don't leave. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there was that one bar next to us that didn't leave. That's the one we ended up taking wow. over. So because the owner said, if you'll stay another two months, I will not release the uh, release the bar. I'll throw them out and you mm -hmm. guys can take it over. So that's what happened. Our second building was a terrible bar that used to be a speakeasy back in the 20s. Mm -hmm. And but uh, 
you know what? We're, we're light. Everybody in this neighborhood here knows that Empty Tomb is a place where, number one, you can be loved and you can get something. If you're hungry, they'll feed you. If, they're, if you need some clothes, we have clothes you can help right. yourself to downstairs. Mm -hmm. The coats, hats, gloves, we always have that down here. So, you know, whatever it is. But mostly, our heart is we just want to love people. Mm -hmm. there, the church does a lot of things really, really good. And there are some churches that are very affluent and they send a lot of money. But Keith Green once said that God can't cash out-of-state checks in heaven. He needs you and he needs us to wow. be the hands and feet of Jesus, to go out and love <laughs> these people for his sake. And so that's, that's, our, that's our heart. That's our desire is to love people. On my way here, I was just kind of thinking, of, well, what, what is in my heart? What do I feel? Uh, what's God saying about you? What's God saying about Empty Tomb? And, and the one phrase that I was getting was the hands and feet of Jesus. And so I'm really glad you just said that because uh, there's a, a uh, probably about six months ago, I was in Council Bluffs and a gentleman was uh, in need of just, um, uh, just some gas money or, or, or something. Yeah, I can't remember exactly, but um, I just, he had a, a sign that was so powerful and was just sharing his uh, heart out for Jesus and and just, uh, I got to hear a story, and um, I just put a picture on Facebook just because it was so powerful. I remember that. And you reached out to me saying, well, what is it the gentleman needs? How can we help? And and right there, that told me so much about uh, about Steve and Empty Tomb, and even the people you surround yourself with. Is It's not about um, our reputation or whatnot. It's how can we help others, yeah. and how can we bless others to help them go further? You know, a lot of years ago, I was speaking as a keynote speaker, me, a keynote speaker <laughs> at Atonement Lutheran Church. And that yeah. night, there was a, there was somebody speaking, then Jeff Kaiser was speaking, and I was speaking after Jeff. And the place was packed, and the Lord didn't give me a message. And I was getting a little nervous. And that's mm -hmm. when I met Jeff, and he was praying for me. I was saying, man, i got to have a word. But that's how he does it with me here. Right. I guess he does it with me there, too. Right. So I walk into this church, and the place is packed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go up there with nothing. And uh, after about a few minutes, I remember seeing this big cowboy sitting in the front. I still can see him in this church, this good-sized church, and he was sitting there. And I, I think it was a Sunday night service, and I believe it was during football season, and I think his wife made him come to church, and he didn't want to be there. So about 10 minutes into the message, perhaps, maybe a few more, I looked down, and the guy's crying. So the Holy Spirit broke the guy down. While I'm speaking, though, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit said to me very clearly, not here, but here, do you love these people? Mm -hmm. He said, do you love these people? And then he said, because if you don't love these people, come down from there. And I never told a soul that, Jeff. But I began to ask the Lord, Lord, teach me how to love your people. Teach mm -hmm. me how to love your people. So I get back down to the empty tomb in our second building down there. And I remember one Sunday I preached the message. And I used to give out all the groceries. And so right. I give this brother a bag of groceries. And I said, the Lord loves you, brother. And he says, well, I love you too, Steve. And I thought, what did I say? I I thought I said, the Lord loves you. Then here comes this other brother who, who was a terrible alcoholic at the time. God since set him free. He hasn't drank anything for 16 years. I gave him a bag of groceries. I said, mm -hmm. the Lord loves you, man. He goes, well, I love you too, Steve. And I thought, what am I saying? <laughs> and then I realized I'm asking God to teach me how to love his people. Wow. And so while I'm asking that, making my prayer, I am loving them and they're loving me back. And so what I've had people tell me now who come here 20 years later, mm -hmm. I've had pastors come down here. There was a pastor of a large church one time sat here and he wept during the service. And I came up and I said, Pastor, are you sick? Are you all right? He said, no. He said, there's a love in this place that I don't feel in our congregation. Wow. And so I feel one as Father has really ministered to me to, to teach me how to love mm -hmm. people. There is such love here on Sundays, and that's what that's the main mm -hmm. thing I hear from people. These people really love each other. Mm -hmm. They do. Sometimes I got a whistle to get them to shut up when it's time to get started because they're all <laughs> talking and they're good, happy to see each other. Right. And uh, but it, that is the thing. I've also had some of them. For, and we just have some wonderful people here. They've gone to other ministries to help with things, mm -hmm. and then I'll get. I've gotten calls from Pastor. Oh, those people. They they are amazing. Like they do this. They love. They love the Lord. They love each other. I just ran into a woman uh, two days ago, uh, and I just, I was just hearing about her and and her heart. And she's like, you know, I'm Christian. I like to, I, I very much have fallen Christ, and uh, this is my church preparing for a launch. 
and she's just there. Um, but she's like, oh, I, uh, I go to the church in South Omaha. I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. You know, I'm just, just out of curiosity where, you know, and it's like, oh, Empty Tomb and, uh, and, and uh, Steve Sheridan is my pastor. I'm like, I know Steve. You know, matter of fact, I interviewed him in two days. How's he doing? So, Small world. Absolutely. Oh, the Lord's good. Well, you never know where your reach no. goes and where those people go. And I had a dear friend of mine. My spiritual mama's name was Sister Mary. She's still with us, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very anointed in the Holy Spirit. And a number of years back, she said, what you're doing with the poor, mm -hmm. she said, that when you take care of the poor and you really love them, she said, your names are ringing in mm -hmm. the city. She yep. said, people know what's going on out there at Empty Tomb. You know, we're not trying to say, hey, look at us. We're not trying to say, we're, we're right. trying to say, hey, look at him. Right. And, you know, my heart is, you know, even from here, you know, I'm able from my office at work just because uh, of what the Lord's doing here. He's given mm -hmm. me the privilege now to share the gospel in mm -hmm. Africa over the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, I just can't get over the, the opportunities that the Lord will afford you if you put him first. I think that's what I really love about coming here, even just having our conversations, whether it's a quick text or, or whatever that form is. But um, you do a great job of, um, one, walking in that blessing that God provides, but you point the glory back to Him. Yeah. And you point others back to Him as well. If God can use me, He can use anybody, and that's a fact. And so, honestly, He could have picked mm -hmm. so many. I always tell Him, Lord, there's way better vessels out there, way better vessels out there. But he knows I love him. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. guys, I'll be honest with you, Jeff. When you, when you get to a place where you've experienced the presence of God, mm -hmm. I, I don't care if I ever preach another sermon or not. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I lead another Bible study. I don't have to tell them this all the time, and I mean it. Right. As long as I have the presence of God, that's all I really want. That's yes. all I want. Right. So, right. And we don't do what we do because, you know, we have to. We do what we do because he's awesome. And we because love him he's that much. And we love him. And I want people to know him. I know I don't. I tell them I don't want you to come to Christ because I don't think you should go mm -hmm. to hell. I think you should go to hell. Mm -hmm. I think I should go to hell. I want you to come to Jesus because He is worthy. Mm -hmm. He deserves the reward of His sacrifice. And one thing we were talking about too is um, that love that we have for one another, uh, for our brothers and sisters, and even our neighbors that we don't even know yet. Um, but that love is to um, share the word, but also have it be truthful. And not just something they want to hear, yeah. but something that's true that where they might feel, ooh, that was kind of bold. But that's all right because what that does is points you back to Christ. Sure it does. You know, a true true love is never obnoxious, you know. Right. It's never obnoxious. Right. You know, we see it in First Corinthians 13, love is, God is. Mm -hmm. um, but the truth of the matter is, is we as Christians, we should... We should pursue the Lord with all of our hearts, seek Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, mm -hmm. and so until the place where the Lord just begins to really walk alongside you in such a way where we're not saying, "Okay, now, Lord, I want to go watch this filthy movie. Right. Why don't you wait for me out there?" It doesn't work that way. Right. Where He just really takes control, and then we just decide, "Lord Jesus, I just want to walk with you mm -hmm. wherever that leads me." Right. Uh, then, no matter where you go. You're always ready. So when you become the same when you're in the midst of a crowd as you are when you're all alone, mm -hmm. that's when you know the Lord has done something amazing in your life. Wow. That's really powerful. Yeah, he's awesome. I had a dream one time. I was in this dream. I saw the Lord. I mean, he was stepping out. He wow. was walking yeah. on the road uh, over there. The sun was shining. There was nobody with him. He had the long robe. And mm -hmm. suddenly in this dream, I realized that there was this little teeny Steve, me, mm -hmm. hanging onto the ends of his robe, and I was hanging on for dear life because he was mm -hmm. walking. And I said, Lord Jesus, I'm just a speck of dust mm -hmm. on your robe. And the master said, yes, but even dust, when it touches my robe, becomes holy. Wow. And so I just really believe that when we cling to the Lord, mm -hmm. the other day he gave me a word. I tell you, it's a good thing that eternity is forever mm -hmm. because it might take me that long to let loose of him when I see him face to face, right. I cling on to his robe for real and see him face to face because I'm telling you, he's awesome. You know, um, you asked me how the ministry's going since we last met, and I, my answer was, you know, it's going the speed it needs to go, the speed that Jesus wants it to. Um, I love the fact that it kind of ebbs and flows, goes fast, and slows down, and what a blessing that is. I get to learn about myself. I get to learn about what God's doing. And even recently, I just... It's like I've been given all these puzzle pieces of different ministries and churches, 
And now it's about how do I help connect these two and, yeah. and get the full picture that God wants done here. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a reason for Amazing. it. There is a reason for it. I mean, what God's got you doing, this is the Lord, obviously. Right, right. Because when he starts something, he'll sustain it. Mm -hmm. and so, And we need this, you know. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have in a lot of churches all over this country, there seems to be a lot of competition, which there shouldn't be. Right. But there is no competition. I mean, I think some places, and I'm not talking about anybody in this city, or don't, don't get mad at me. Sure, yeah. But there are places that are more interested in filling my building mm -hmm. than I am filling the kingdom of heaven or, right. or heaven. And we can't be that way. We cannot ever become covetous when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. If you're walking with the Lord and you're teaching the truth and you're seeking the face of God and you're led by the Spirit of God mm -hmm. and you're spending time in His presence and you're hungry for the Spirit of God and for the Word of God mm -hmm. and, and you have a... I mean, guys, let's be honest. How many people out there are listening to Jeff and I right now weep at night over the condition of people's souls. How many people out there are weeping mm -hmm. that right now, this very minute, somebody died in this city, I bet, or someone near to us that's right. going to go to hell because right. they didn't come to Jesus? How many of us are weeping over the condition of our mm -hmm. of our nation? Like, mm -hmm. like Nehemiah wept. Until there is a baptism of anguish, we're not going to see revival. I've been noticing in the last, gosh, even since God woke me up with that dream, it's just like, I am more disappointed and, and just my heart's a, I'm aware of things that I was never aware of before. Mm -hmm. I, I'm concerned over things I was never concerned of before, but I realized what that is, is God's opening my eyes to things so I can share about it or, or help in that area. And, and I think that wow, our hearts should burn for what burns his. Our mm -hmm. hearts should mourn for what mourns his heart and grieve for what grieves his. Our hearts should delight over what mm -hmm. delights his heart. Again, ultimately, you know, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives mm -hmm. until it's, you know, some some wise person once mm -hmm. said where it's some of me and, and some of Christ and then it's less of me and more of Christ right. until someday, thank God, when we see him face to face, it's all of Christ. But, you know, there's a place in the Lord that I believe we on this earth can attain to if you go there with him. Mm -hmm. It's it's how much of yourself will you die to? Right. Nobody ever preaches about dying to themselves anymore. Right. A.W. Tozer said yep. to Leonard Ravenhill, Len, one thing you've learned is when somebody takes up a cross, there's going to be a burial. So every day, if you take up your cross, he's saying you have to die daily. Paul said, I die daily. We walk a narrow, a straight and narrow path. And the other day, I just had this visual of a balance beam. Like, this is a narrow path that we're on. And it's easy to fall off one side or the other. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when you're on that balance beam? You, you get back up and you keep walking on that path. Yeah. And we need to be there to help each other as we fall off to get back up so we can walk on that straight now. Yeah, I think the thing that's really been talking to me, you know, the, late, the other day I had a little short message on Facebook that I posted and I mm -hmm. talked a little bit about it yesterday, but I, I, I'm turning, I'm trying not to watch the news mm -hmm. because here I am and here you are, mm -hmm. We love Jesus, mm -hmm. born again Christians, want to see people get saved. But yet I can watch people on the news, like people who don't agree with the way I might think sure. politically, and I don't just not like them. I can't stand them <laughs> to the point where you hate, hey, look, I don't even want to see that. Sure. I mean, That's so our human. I think we need to just turn some of that crap off. I really do. And then, guys, honestly, brothers and sisters, what are we watching? Mm -hmm. How are we entertaining our mm -hmm. minds? You know, what are we doing at night when we go home? And then I'll. I'll be honest with you, I've allowed way too much garbage into this melon mm -hmm. I got on top mm -hmm. of my shoulders. Yep. And we got to get to a place where we have to say, Lord Jesus, if it doesn't please you, I don't want it in my life right. whatsoever. Because what you see through your eyes is going to, A, have you question things, mm -hmm. B, is going to make you be confused about things, or, or many other things like that. You're not going to have that... that um, you're going to be opening up something that you don't want to open up. Well, you know, TV. If you stop and think about it, when it first came out back in the back in the fifties or mm -hmm. late forties, fifties, probably fifties. You know, soon you'd start seeing the kids and the people uh, in life acting like you know, like when Elvis they saw Elvis on Ed Sullivan, all mm -hmm. the said kids wanted to comb their head back, or right. James Dean, right. and all of a sudden everybody wanted to wear the guys. The enemy uses television. There's no question about it. To, mm -hmm. to corrupt minds. 
and he's corrupted the mind of the church. I really believe that the church in America has become so desensitized to sin because we spend way too much time watching that television. What I love about this episode is um, it's not so much like, oh, how has God moved this or that? You're, God is taking these ideas that he's given us and it's it's given you something to sit and chew on it's yeah. meat to chew on yeah uh and, and not just milk you know and, no. and you might have a thought that or, or opinion that's like mm, i don't know if i like how that was said or that's all right but but it's a starting point to be like all right now where do you go from that you know uh i was on a program with fc farwell once and i think fc told me that the people said if you're ever on there again put a hood over Steve's face. So that wasn't very nice, was it? Oh, but oh, no. Nah, he didn't really say that. But you know, maybe that's one thing you don't like about this conversation. He looks good and I'm good. But oh, no, no, in reality, I hope, you know, anytime I have the privilege to talk to somebody either one-on-one -on -one or this is a blessing, right. I just hope somebody out there will say, you know what, I think I think the Lord's talking to me here. I, think mm -hmm. I need to look at my own heart because I'm talking to me too. Mm -hmm. I, I need to turn that television off, quit watching that news because I don't like to get hate in my heart for people. Jesus wants these people mm -hmm. saved. He died for the Democrats as well as the Republicans. Yep. And to be honest with you, I don't like none of them. <laughs> you know, I just want to see right. people get saved. And right. unfortunately, what you see is not what you get. So then it makes you start to judge. I just want to just trust the Lord mm -hmm. and, and pray for our, our president, pray for our Congress, pray for all of them because the mm -hmm. Bible says we're supposed to. Right. But yep. I don't have to sit and watch all that stuff every day. You don't have to agree with them, but you no, still pray for them because no, you love them. Yeah. yeah, and it's, uh, same thing. I was I told you yesterday. I, you know, I'll, I'll watch some show like a I like cop shows. You mm -hmm. know, so for a while, you know, I start watching a cop show, and then they always have a show about you know a guy and a woman, and there's some mm -hmm. sort of sexual tension right. between them, right. and then they're not in a couple relationship, but it goes on. And then after the end of the season, all of a sudden. They finally come together, and mm -hmm. what do they do? They fall into immorality, mm -hmm. and they fall into sex. And it, parties think, wow, they finally came together. Whoa, that's sin. Mm -hmm. But that's how we get desensitized mm -hmm. to these things. As the church, guys, we really need to, we need to really bring ourselves before the Lord and say, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus, renew my mind. Renew my mind, mm -hmm. purify my heart yes. with the refiner's fire. Remove anything from my mind and my heart and my life that does not please you. Make me the vessel you want me to be. You know, even as um, my board comes together and we, we're laying down the foundation of, um, one, what does God say about this? How does this point people to Christ? And, and B, how do we not let culture define this? How do we let only God define this? And, and not every church or ministry is going to be on this website. Yeah. You know, and, and they're not supposed to be. Um, God's going to point us in the direction He needs to, and and so what, and how that's we, all right. How do we gauge that by the Word of God? Mm -hmm. You know, anything that says yep. "Thus saith the Lord" is yep. to be obeyed. Exactly. You know, some people say "Thus saith the Lord." Well, I'm going to have to pray about that. No, <laughs> if it says "Thus saith the Lord" or if it's in the Bible, mm -hmm. then you don't have to pray about. It. We have to obey it. There's going to be a time where I'm going to say, "You know, I love you, friend," but um, at this point in time, we can't have you on here. Yeah. Um, that just doesn't go with our beliefs and doesn't go with our foundation. You know, you can. the Bible says love our enemies. Mm -hmm. And so we, we're called to love everyone. Mm -hmm. But whoever comes alongside of you, because if we're sitting here, then people are assuming that Jeff and I agree. Right. Uh, right. So if you've got somebody here who's, who's speaking the same thing, and yet my thoughts are way out here and mm -hmm. out of the Bible, and, the, and then in a way you're endorsing me, mm -hmm. you have to be careful not to do that. But you can, you can, if that's the premise, if you're going to sit out and say, now here's two guys who don't, let's talk, let's debate, right. that's different. And there's something about having a conversation too. And mm -hmm. um, but I tell you what, God is absolutely leading us in a, in a direction and um, the speed's going just the way it needs to. Yeah. And it's, it, it's amazing where we've been and where we're going. And 2019 wow. is going to be an awesome year. It really I, is. I, you know, listen guys, we're already in the 14th day of this year. Mm -hmm. So... January 14th, it's going fast. So mm -hmm. I believe the Lord's making inroads in 2014. Don't waste any time. Mm -hmm. Because before you know it, it's gonna be June 2019. Did I say 2014? Uh, I hope I did. I don't know, we'll have to read No, I said it's June, yeah. <laughs> But, so we wanna, we wanna take every day, that's what I mean, we can't waste right. time. Time is short. This could be my last day on the earth, mm -hmm. and nobody knows. So I wanna be found uh, pleasing to the Lord. I wanna be found uh, please, when he comes back, I hope he finds me. Okay.
What happened? Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're back. Okay. Uh, you know, I find that I have conversations with my wife, and I, I, I bring it up regularly because I don't know when my last moment is. And I say, you know, if, if anything ever happens to me, um, I, you know, you try to help get things to keep going mm -hmm. forward. Uh, same with this vision and this ministry, and even those that um, I yeah. try to help and help them get on that path. But uh, to me, it's about we need to be generational thinking and uh, not about self, but how can we get this going forward and keep pointing people to Christ for years to come? You know, to me as a father, I have a lot of Bibles. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll pick them up as I go and buy them. I don't even think my wife knows how many I have or because you know, I have some in my office, but I use them. Sure. I use them. Right. But I always write notes in my Bibles mm -hmm. because when I'm gone, I want my kids and my grandkids wow. to come back and follow my path, mm -hmm. follow the things that the Holy Spirit was saying to me uh, at that time in my life. And and I just I'm leaving I'm leaving tracks, breadcrumbs wow. to follow. You know, of course, you know all the sermons I've preached in all these 21 years are either on cassette tape, uh, video cassette tape. Mm -hmm. But now they're on DVD, or else they're just on, mm -hmm. you know, regular uh, out there now on the mm -hmm. cloud. So they'll know what Grandpa or Dad was thinking. My kids, of course, they know they they've grown up at MP2. Right. You know, I realized too. Um, these episodes, yeah, they show about the churches and the ministry, how God's moving in them. But what they are is it's an encyclopedia of God is good. God is good. God is good. God provides. God provides. God and it just deals. shows how much he loves us. It's yeah. amazing. We've seen a lot of miracles down here too. The, the mm -hmm. awesome thing here is a lot of folks who come here on Sundays, they don't feel comfortable in some churches because, you know, some are coming off the street. And, sure. And we try to help folks when we can if they need, you know, uh, assistance with with uh, financial help. If, if we have it, we'll try to help. Sure. But uh, we've had people literally healed down here. We've had mm -hmm. some tremendous things happen. And to see people who are not church people experience the presence of God like right. this, that blesses my heart because they don't know how to act. They don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. They just take it at face value mm -hmm. when they have an encounter with the Lord. And to watch their lives change, it's amazing. And we were just saying just, you're welcome. You know, you're welcome to come. Oh, yeah. Uh, no matter what that is, we want you to have a relationship with Christ. We've been running. Uh, we need a bigger building. So if the Lord puts it in your heart to give us a new building, thank you. <laughs> but uh, there'll be nice some Sundays here. We're we've switched it around. We've done a little bit of movement, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so we can put. We've had as many as three hundred in here. Wow! But uh, don't tell anybody. But I think we're only how supposed to have one hundred and eighty-seven. <laughs> so there's some Sundays I'll tell them. Listen, if the fire marshal shows up, think skinny, <laughs> and, and, and uh, don't say anything, or every other head go down. You know. But uh, so far, so good. But it's a blessing to find people, and they're right. hungry, and to listen to them sing and worship the Lord. I'm telling you, we have a jail ministry now. We're working with uh, Bridgeway with the uh, Sherry mm -hmm. um, Rosenberry, who's an awesome lady, and uh, she has a ministry. So we're renting a bus every Sunday, and we're bringing about 50 guys, 40 to 50 people mm -hmm. from the, um, uh, what is it called? community center down there where they're on work release right and so they get they're coming here to hear the gospel but sometimes their families meet them here too mm -hmm. and they don't they can't sit with them but they're in the same place and and they so i get the chance to preach to these guys they get to preach to mm -hmm. their families and a lot of them when they get paroled they stay here what would you say is one of your biggest um i don't say accomplishment what's the one of the best memories that you have of which is a lot to you think know, of in 21 years yeah you know i mean we've had some experiences that my father always wakes me up at three o'clock in the morning. At, That's when know, I had my drink. Yeah, it's three o'clock, and I, I just go sit before him. And sometimes, you know, uh, I'll just pray. Sometimes I'll just sit. Sometimes I'll doze off. Mm -hmm. There was one time in particular. Um, I don't know if I dozed off, if I had a dream, or if I had an open vision. But I was mm -hmm. here at empty tomb, by myself. The carpet was white. The walls were white. The ceiling wow. was white. There was one chair in the middle of the floor, and I was sitting in it. And the Lord said to me in this dream or whatever it was, preach Matthew chapter 9, uh, 43 through the end of the chapter, or 35 wow. through the end of the chapter. And, and then he said, pray for the sick. Mm -hmm. So this is Sunday morning, so I didn't tell anybody, hey, mm -hmm. get all the sick people. I just came to the mission and I, I uh, preached the message he gave me the preach. And then I said, mm -hmm. but there were all these people I'd never seen before who were sick. Wow. And uh, 
Wow. So I said, I, I feel the Lord wants me to pray. So if you're sick, I want you to come forward. I'm going to pray for you. I always carry oil with me wherever mm -hmm. I go. And on this particular occasion, I was carrying this oil that has like the consistency of Carmex. Mm. And so these people came forward. There was a woman named Kathy uh, who her sister had been coming here, begging her to come here. She had been diagnosed with terminal breast cancer. Oh, wow. And her, she had just got the news, which I didn't know this, she just got the news from her doctor, go home, there's nothing more we can do for you. Mm -hmm. Your skin is burned, your radiation from the radiation, oh. and you're just gonna have to get your, your life in order. And Renee was begging her sister, please come, please mm -hmm. come, but she didn't mm -hmm. wanna come. She, she was mad at God. Mm -hmm. But on this particular Sunday, she came. And so, but when I'm praying for Kathy, wow. I look down at my hands and they're full of oil. And the, the oil that's consistency right. of the Carmex, it liquefied. And this is absolutely the truth. I prayed for Kathy and everybody else who was that day. Uh, Kathy went home. Three days later, she called Renee over and showed her her skin was no longer burned. It was like wow. her skin. And about 10 days later, she went back to her cancer doctor. She had 24 lumps of cancer in her mm -hmm. breast. Her doctor declared her cancer free. Her doctor called her general practitioner, said your, your patients had a miracle. And Kathy, that was 12 years ago. She comes to church here. Uh, since she got healed, she started having visions and things like that. I'm telling you, these are the things that I'll never forget because God moves down here. Mm -hmm. We've had people say they see angels down here. Big ways and small ways, he moves. And it's the little things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we like to hear about these, but it's the little things. It's, it's, right. it's that guy coming in off the street who, mm -hmm. who heard the word 38 years, mm -hmm. and he knew that God was talking to him. So. And God goes with the, the smallest of details. Yes, yeah. every detail is important. One of the amazing things that really touched me, it brought me brought me to tears. There was a man who came down here and he wanted to make a video about empty tombs. So he said, Steve, you just do what you do, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take pictures. And then his son-in-law put it to picture, uh, Dan Willis, and put it to music. And so then he showed me the video with some beautiful music, and I was so amazed because while I'm up here preaching, all these folks were opening their Bibles and taking notes. I don't notice that when wow. I'm up there. And people that I remember when they first yep. came in off the street, and now they're clean and sober, they're off the drugs and the mm -hmm. alcohol, and, and they are reading God's Word and they're taking wow. their notes. That, that blessed me. I'll tell you, I'll never forget that. So you do so much. And I even said, what events do you have coming up or what outreaches? And you're like, you know, we, we just outreach all the time. This you is know? an outreach. But I told him last yeah. Sunday, I said, one of these days on Sunday from here, I'm just going to say, hey, guys, let's go out. And let's mm -hmm. just hit the streets. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, ultimately, I always tell people, I'm not the evangelist in this neighborhood. You are. Right. And you know what? They are. The Thank reason you. why we have so Thank many you. people is, is because they are bringing the yes. people in. Yes. And uh, I just love that. I just love that. There's a guy one day stood up, Justin, over here. When he first started coming here, he was a meth addict. Mm -hmm. And he brought this one guy. And the one fella, he, he got off the meth right away. And Justin didn't right away. But the one fella who got off it right away, he's still out there in the street. Justin's clean, sober, loves the Lord, mm -hmm. puts some weight on, looks great, and, and he's been sober off that stuff for 10 years. Wow. So, I mean, this is the thing. When you love people and you give them hope in Christ Jesus, you give them the Word of God, I'm telling you, that's, I believe in the One Step mm -hmm. program, and I don't take anything away from AAA. It can be a blessing. Mm -hmm. But when you really give your life to Jesus and trust Him as your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. that's, what it, that's what it did for me, because mm -hmm. I was hooked on that crap, and, and mm -hmm. the Lord set me free. Wow. 34 years ago. Wow. What would you say is one of the, um, what's one of the best ways that uh, local communities and churches can help right now? What's, what's, uh, what's a way where you're like, I just, if God could provide in this way. To help us here, mm -hmm. you know, I just would say do whatever the Lord leads you to do. My heart, to be honest yeah, with you, my heart is not just an empty tomb. Right. My heart is for the city of Omaha right. and Council Bluffs. It is, I, I want the churches in Omaha and Council Bluffs, Bellevue, Ralston, all mm -hmm. this area, I want them to be alive. Mm -hmm. I want them to go out and reach the lost. And so, whatever that means, we had a pastor sitting up here one Sunday from North mm -hmm. Omaha, dear brother, and he was so moved by the Holy Spirit that he told the brother who invited him, I want my whole congregation to come through here. That's awesome. Well, it has nothing to do with me. Right. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. There's a spirit of revival here. Yep. And we're hungry for revival. And every church, all that said to me is, every church needs revival. Mm -hmm. We need revival. Mm -hmm. And so that's my heart. So whether I'm at the store uh, and people come down mm -hmm. or, or I'm on the radio in Africa, it doesn't make mm -hmm. a difference. To me, the world is my, is my 
Hmm? It's my vineyard. Right. I, I want to plant and sow anywhere the Lord sends me. So I don't have any walls around this place. That's One amazing. time years ago, we were acting a little churchy down here, and people were starting this sure monkey shine like some people do in churches. And I told them I had my keys to the church. I said, and there wasn't near as many people. I said, if you people want to play church, mm -hmm. here's my keys. And I threw them out there. Mm -hmm. I, I'll go get a, I'll go get a glory. I'll go get a, uh, a tent. You know, uh, last episode I was with uh, evangelist, evangelist Joshua Smith and Caleb Wampler. And um, I told them, uh, as I was preparing for the board meeting, I had this great pricing model of how this vision can go. And, and then uh, the next, day, I don't know if this is the next day, but a couple days later, I just had the vision of that model with a big line through it. Mm. God said he's going to provide. That's right. I know he's going to provide. And, and it's not for me to get in the way. Um, if God starts it, he'll pay for it. Absolutely. Empty Tomb started. Um, so for the first three, four years, we were down on N Street. When mm -hmm. we came to this place, we bought this church. And in three years, it was completely paid off. Wow. We never did a car wash. We never did a bake sale. Mm -hmm. I believe if God starts something, he'll he'll pay for it. Absolutely. You know, so I, I just think that's... Same thing with you. Yep. You just trust him. He'll yep. take care of it. Thank you. I even said, um, as we get started, you know, we'll just go and God's going to keep keep us going. And when he says time to stop, time to put the keys away, it's time to stop. Amen. You know, just be obedient with what he what he tells you. I'm trying to find my replacement because I always feel that someday <laughs> the Lord's going to say, Steve, it's time to travel. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I uh, we're on uh, we're on live, Gary. So <laughs> anyway. So whatever, you know, we just wherever, whatever the Lord, I told the Lord years ago when I got saved, Lord, I will go anywhere you want me to go. Right. I'll say anything you want me to say and I'll do anything you want me to do. Right. And, uh, and I mean it and he'll, he'll hold you to it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what we do. And any, what you might perceive as a potential step down or step back is really recharging you for the next thing. Cause we're not done that's until right. we go home. You know what he does. You're young. You don't probably get it yet. But I'm <laughs> old and stupid. Oh, no. And what I do is I overdo myself. And I can hear the Lord will say, hey, rest, rest, rest. But I'm do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. And then my back will go out or something mm -hmm. where I have to rest. Right. And so I'm trying to learn not to be so stupid. <laughs> so if it gives me an opportunity to, to rest, rest. Take that time yep. or, else, you know, or else it might cost me. Um, it's January right now, but going into December, I said we're going to kind of slow down the ministry for the rest of the year and just be the family and uh, just focus on what got you know, mm -hmm. our relationship with Christ and we'll pick it up in the new year. Something's going to happen. Oh, when this revival, big time. <laughs> when, when, when the revival, don't go back to that, but when this sure. thing hits, yep. everybody's life is never going to be the same. Right. It's never going to be the same again. So you might as well enjoy the time now. Once I decided to take a little time and just focus on myself, well, I got phone calls, emails that I didn't even, I didn't orchestrate those. So I didn't start you? those. Stop trying so hard. Exactly. Like God <laughs> That's the same with me. Right. You know, I, I, right. I, I, I'm always blessed when I get opportunities to go share the Lord. Uh, some places I've been invited to places to speak, and sometimes I've been only invited once. Sometimes I say things that, like Which is what I right. say here, and I'm not, I'm not trying to make friends. I tell mm -hmm. them down here, I'm not here to be your friend. I love you, but I'd rather you hate me and go to heaven than love me and go to hell. That's and so that's just the way we have to be. We need to tell it like it is. And um, and I think that, again, the church in America, if we, if, if we would be honest with ourselves, everyone listening to us tonight, right now, if we could sit down across from Jesus right now and just be absolutely saying, Lord, <laughs> I know you're pleased with me, aren't you? Because mm -hmm. you know you can see where we can't see. I wouldn't make that statement. Mm -hmm. I mean, yesterday at church, I was telling people, now, if you're not the person you want, that God wants you to be today, and you, you just raise your hand if you want to make a new commitment, I'm standing up there, and I, I got my hand raised. Mm -hmm. I said, you, I got my mm -hmm. hand raised. I'm talking about, I want more. I want to be more mm -hmm. and more, more of Jesus and less of me. And there's a lot of Steve that still got to die. When I die, I want people to perceive me as he had the most bold faith I've ever seen. And he's, uh, he did everything he could to be as obedient as he could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good word. You know, I've told people before, it would be such an honor if when I leave this earth, somebody might say, that was a man of God. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and sometimes we use that term loosely. Mm -hmm. But I mean, a man of God, like some of the ones that have gone before us, you know, mm -hmm. like A.W. Tozer, and, right. you know, Charles Finney and Moody and some of these greats and just, you know, people in our own city. You know that are out there getting it done, have been getting it done. We got some wonderful men of God and women mm -hmm. of God in our city. We, God is bringing a lot of you here for what's getting ready to happen. So, but so let's be those per persons, those people that God has called us to be. Not that I want us to be. Not that I want me to be. I don't want to be who I want to be. I want to be who He wants me to be. Well, Steve, I tell you what, your light shines bright. Praise in this world. So thank you for that. Amen. Can I pray for folks? Absolutely. And I always tell people, you know, the Bible says, if you let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify Beautiful. your Father in heaven. If you plug into the source of light, you can't Absolutely. help it to shine. Right. Father, yeah. in Jesus' name, I thank you for Jeff. I thank you for his heart. And Lord, I, I, when I see his videos, I can just see the joy he has. I see the desire he has to bring people together for the common purpose, Lord. And yes. I love that about this young brother. And and I pray for those that are at home listening or at work, whoever's going to watch this, I pray that each one of us that is sharing this time together would be challenged by something yes. you heard here, that we would look at our lives and we would be obedient and honest enough to say to the Lord, Lord, I'm watching too much garbage, yes. I'm doing too much, yes. um, I'm operating too much in the flesh. I want to get on board, Lord. Yes. I, want to, I want to begin to weep over the condition of the church. And, in America or the church I'm going to or the church in this city or whatever it is I want to 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 get on board Lord I want to be the vessel you want me to be I want to take my role whether it's teach us how to love your people teach us how to love uh, unselfishly Lord and always and in every way for your glory in Jesus name Father we just thank you for Steve we thank you for empty two and we thank you for what you're doing in this church around this community and even in each and every one of our lives. Yes. Father, we just pray that the words that uh, that we've used, even especially what Steve has said today on this episode, that they, that they pierce the darkness, yes. that they reach the hearts of each and every person out there. Revive that whatever us. clutter is, is on us is just, it, it's been pierced, it's been, it's dropping at our feet and that we experience the freedom in you, Christ. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. And we just thank you for this thank opportunity. You. Hallelujah. And we just pray that this just continues to just uh, uh, magnify and, yes. and, and just reach not just here in Omaha, but even around the world. And in thank places you. that we can't even fathom. Mm -hmm. All this we pray in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Yes. Let's do one other thing. Jesus, yes. I pray for those that are sick, that are battling yes. illness. I pray for Deanna. Yes. I pray for Gretchen. I pray for Jim and Jim and and um, Donnie and and uh, Sam and just so many out there and those that I'll, I don't know you, but the Lord knows mm -hmm. you. I pray that your healing power will be released, Lord Jesus. I speak health yes. to these bodies. I just curse anything the enemy has sent against them, Lord Jesus. And those who are having to go through the fire, Lord Jesus. Mm, yes. I just. Just pray that as we suffer, as we go through, as we suffer with Christ and for Christ, Lord Jesus, that you'll bring them through this with hands raised, shouting, glory, hallelujah. So, Father, thank you for the healings. Thank you for the miracles, even from this broadcast. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for Amen. your time. Amen. And thank you all so much for just tuning in and just... Uh, just listen to us put our hearts out and, and glorify God as we do so. If we don't see you sooner, we'll see you in heaven. Amen. <laughs> that sounds good. Amen. Thank Peace. you all.